I was always good at art in high school, and before that, my mom always really um, encouraged that, my mom and dad. So I had these big influences in my life. My parents were really um, supportive, and she was always pushing me to do art more, and I was kind of, you know, I, I was into it, but not into it, and she finally said, uh, you know, you don't have to keep doing it if you don't want, so I didn't really keep doing it in high school. Hi, I'm Jeff Farnsworth, and I'm here at 13th Street Gallery in uh, St. Catharines. It's a really good feeling for me to be in such a beautiful space here at 13th Street Gallery. Really nice big open walls, and there's a lot of space and air, and it's clean and set up so well for looking at art um, and looking at the paintings and the sculpture. And it feels really good to be able to stand back and look at uh, quite a few pieces over this period of time and see where they've come and kind of feel out where I want to be going next. The big question is when is a painting finished? And uh, some of the time a painting feels definitely finished and other times it feels finished and you get it back, uh, you haven't seen it for a while and you look, you just can't resist taking it and changing it. My first inspirations were like uh, the Impressionists and that sort of thing. Well, especially Salvador Dali at the start. I loved, you know, to be able to see somebody who could handle form and representation so well, but that could have a completely sort of surreal, different uh, framework going on. So I loved that. I love, you know, it was really, um, really inspiring on both fronts there. And then as I started painting more and more and looking at um, Impressionists and Post-Impressionists and some illustrators and people like uh, Bernie Fuchs or Brad Holland or, or people like that, um, you know, and people working within uh, these different traditions, um, I started getting more excited about paint and about, um, you know, building a figure. But, you know, it's built with paint. It's not just about blending and uh, trying to make it look like something that's from the real world. It's also celebrating the materials, celebrating drips and brush strokes and a palette and a process and an adventure. And so these artists did that for me. Um, there was, when I was at more studying with uh, realists, there's one big influence was Odd Nurdrum, um, who was just like one of the kings of figurative painting and his stuff too. Um, he paints so amazingly. And you look at his stuff in, uh, I mean, if we're always on our phones and looking at it digitally, it looks like one thing, but when you get up to the paintings, you realize it's also as, figure of, as figurative as it is and as immaculate as this painting is, um, you also see it sort of Rembrandt-esque, and so you do see a materiality of the paint, and uh, you see the brush strokes, and you can feel the process, and see the drips, and that excited me too. It wasn't all hidden brush strokes. I was influenced by a lot of art. I was able to go see the actual paintings. Um, so yeah, that, that was a huge thing. And then getting more and more into abstraction. And, um, you know, it could be someone like Willem de Kooning, but I like his stuff, especially uh, when it was kind of the early figurative abstractive stuff and that kind of mix. And then he'd go more abstract or totally abstract, pure abstraction and come back. You know, he'd, he'd work in that realm.
my favorite teacher, uh, Kiff Holland, who, who was one of my teachers at Cap College, he said, saw me looking around in Canada for places to study painting and he just said, you should go to the Art Students League of New York. Um, it was like the atelier system back in the night. I loved uh, 19th century painting and the Impressionists and post-Impressionists. And so they would learn that way, which that the League would do was I'd be enrolled in full-time uh, figurative classes. It could be under, um, you know, it was maybe a really extraordinary uh, portrait painter who'd be painting uh, people like, um, you know, well-known people, political figures. And so you'd be in there as a student just working, working all day and the teacher would come in every other day um, or two days a week. Another um, interesting thing in the show is nine years ago I was collaborating with Chris Whitfoot and Jonathan Adams on a series of sculpture and so we have eight uh, sculpture in here also. Chris Whitfoot and his wife have a home business, uh, Oso Home, and they do really well with the Etsy shop. And they work with wood, and um, so Chris and I hang out a lot, a lot of the time in the backyard. And we, he had um, had this uh, desire to start a whole series of pieces. We're going to do a lot more, and we're going to work uh, again on more pieces also. Well, my daughter is who I have painted by far the most now. So a lot of the time, you know, it's a celebration of this somebody I love very much, someone in my life. Um, I like to paint people in my life. And, um, you know, some of the time figures become a different figure. You know, you're starting from one thing and it's a launching pad and they often can become, they don't really feel like the original person they start with. Some of the time it is more portraiture and it is that person. I just, I try and let the painting speak to me and uh, be guided by the process. Usually I'm starting a piece based on, a, um, usually on a figure, usually on a person I know. It could be a head or it could be a pose. Some of the time through the painting process and a lot of scraping and moving paint around, um, it would start to lend itself. You know, it became a couple of kind of rocks and a bit of a water uh, and forest kind of thing here. But every time it's as much as about becoming a rock, it's as much as a palette movement and spreading paint. And then I'm feeling out contrasts. Um, maybe I'm feeling, oh, it's getting a little light here. We need, there's some darks around this edge. And maybe I need darks in another area, so I might think of that. I might grab some paint just quickly, and it's not specifically about a, a specific color. It's just more like a value choice, or it's a shape choice. So other times I'm going in, I'm specifically trying to carve out um, the shape of an eye, uh, a silhouette, or a bit of hair. Or maybe some area I want more focus. Another area I want it to blend out. Again, that's contrasts of... Um, razor-like sharp edges against blurry, uh, gradated passages in the painting. Um, small marks versus large marks. Paintings are sort of happening on their own. You make some movements. It feels it feels good. It feels like it has a certain place, um, or something feels out of place. And it's about listening to the painting. Mm -hmm. 